Um, so I, I consider myself a practitioner. And uh, so it's really great to get such good ideas from all of you guys. I can't wait to go back. I feel a little bit overwhelmed by it. <laughs> but to go back and uh, to put these things into practice with students that we, that we support. Um, I've been working in transition uh, for, for many years. And um, I've always kept three things in mind that have, uh, I don't know, I've been the, the center of what I do. Um, that to keep transition person-centered, uh, to keep it student-directed, and based on real-life experiences. And that seems to work, and it works, uh, um, it's worked really well for us, and I want to talk about, too, um, I, I usually start out in, in when, when students come uh, and we interview them, and we, we collect their goals, ideas of, of what their main goals are. Main goals for the students and main goals for the parents. And students, they're always the same. They're always the same. Students always express their desire to connect with others, uh, to make positive contributions to the world, and to live independently. And parents express the same things. Maybe not in that same order, uh, but certainly the same things. They want their students to be happy. Uh, they want them to be connected in a, in a social way um, with people, have friends, um, and then also living independently and having a good job to support themselves is top on their list too. Um, we ask students too when they come uh, to talk about, um, uh, talk about their needs and their values. And um, I use a, um, an inventory list that, they, that, that I give them and it's always surprising to me um, what they feel like is really important to them uh, because they always check everything that has to do with connection. And they use words like, uh, and they, they really, they take a lot of time to do this and really think about it. Acceptance is important. Appreciation, belonging, communication, community, companionship, consideration. Intimacy, love, self-respect, security, to know and to be known, to understand and be understood. Another thing they check is autonomy. Lots of autonomy. What's important to you? It's important to me to have a choice, freedom, independence, power, responsibility, spontaneity. and humor and joy. So I, I, it's, it's hard sometimes for us because we've got two conflicting things. They want to be independent. They want to be left alone. Uh, but then there also there's this deep, deep need for uh, being connected uh, to people, uh, to each other, um, and, and to the community. Um, because a lot of times they want it really badly. I think you mentioned this too, Brian. Uh, but they, they also resist it at the same time. Uh, so that's our challenge um, at a uh, college internship program. How do we make that happen? How do we bring that out of students, for students? Um, and I think um, how we like to do it, and, and Michael uh, described CIP so nicely with those little, this, those little pictorial uh, uh, cues there. I like that. Um, we try to create uh, an environment that's person-centered and, and student-directed. By that I mean we really try hard to make it individual. Really try hard to make it individual. And sometimes it drives everybody crazy in the national office because we try so hard to make it individual. But uh, we really feel like that's important because everybody that comes in is different. Um, and we also, uh, try hard to make it student directed too, and based on real life experiences. And this thing is a, this is important. So I want to spend some time talking about this because we don't often think about this too much in transition. 
um, is looking at the environment and how can we make those connections with the community so that students can have really real experiences and connect with, uh, uh, make the connections that they need to connect with um, to experience success. Um, so we really make an effort to shift away from, um, from the in-house and classroom instruction only. We don't make that, that well, we, we do a lot of instruction in, in, in the classroom, but we don't want to make that the center of what we do. Uh, we want to take that skill acquisition away from the center into real life. Uh, and so my question is always, uh, uh, how can, uh, the question is always, can you succeed in the community? You're taking this skill, how can you use it in the community? Uh, because that's where the real learning takes place. It's hard for them to generalize these, uh, a lot of these skills that they're using. So we really try to push them into the community. And I think CIP as a whole is um, making an important uh, uh, move towards this and the Making It Real um, initiative. And REALS is an, acro an acronym for uh, ready for employment and academics, ready for employment, academics, and life. And um, I don't know, it's, it's uh, I think that Bloomington as an environment is a pretty easy place to make all this happen. And I don't know if people are, are familiar with Bloomington or not, uh, but it's kind of an unusual city um, in that it's, there's, a, there's a huge university there. Uh, so we feel the presence of the university, but there's all, it's also a small town. Um, and so it's also, um, uh, there's a history of autism support there. So the whole community is familiar with, uh, uh, with, with some of the challenges that our students face. Um, we have uh, a school community that supports autism. I think per capita, uh, the Bloomington Monroe, Monroe County Schools supports more students with autism than any other place in Indiana. Um, and they do it quite gracefully, too, uh, using best practices, especially in the field of transition. Um, so I think that it's, oh, and then also the Bloomington community itself um, has a history of lifelong learning. Um, so if you can't get it from the community college, or you can't get it from the university. Uh, there are a ton of uh, uh, a ton of, of of certifications that you can get from the city of Bloomington to help move forward um, in your 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 quest for independence and connections. Um, so we do this in three ways. Um, uh, we try to create. Uh, uh, community based on individual skills, increasing, uh, building on students' strengths, teaching them new habits and routines, and letting go of what's not working. And then we do this in, in this uh, uh, place of support, security in our own CIP community, uh, facilitating discussions about issues that the students are facing. Uh, students support each other and they mediate uh, uh, problems that, that, that occur. Um, so it's a, it's a nice, secure environment to, to, to get the, get the uh, conversation started. And then we look for ways to strengthen community by, by building connections out in, by building connections academically. And uh, we have the opportunity to work with you at Indiana University along with uh, 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 Ivy Tech Community College, and then the Bloomington uh, community itself. We have lots of opportunities uh, to, for employment, um, and then independent living. There are community classes, tons of clubs that students can belong to, uh, and then fostering relationships beyond CIP, too. Uh, and I think that that's part of the transition process, too, uh, is that not everybody's going to stay in Bloomington. So we try to connect them up with people like you, uh, who they can go back to their community and, uh, uh, and have uh, uh, people to support them there. 
And I think it's really encouraging. It must be encouraging for you to sit out there and be from the Chicago area and, um, and have all these people that you can turn to. And I think there's a lot more of you out there too. So there's a lot going on in your area uh, that you can pull from too. Um, and I just wanted to end, I'm not going to talk too much longer, uh, but with, uh, well, well we, we, we had an interview the other day, and a student, um, one of the student ambassadors came in and talked to a student, and uh, he, the, the, the student who was interviewing said, well, you know, I'm really not sure what I want to do. I don't know if I, I, I want to go to a big university. I don't know if I want to go to a small community college. I don't even know what I want to do. Um, and so he said to him, well, don't feel bad if you don't know exactly what you want to do, uh, because most college students are. Don't. They come here and, uh, uh, and they try a lot of different things. And he went on to say that he just read an article in the New York Times saying that the 30s are like the new 20s. And uh, the 20s are now considered the transition years. Um, and that made him feel better. He was very encouraged by this because he felt like, well, gee, I've got a chance. You know, I'm 23 now. I've got seven more years to, to, to really uh, uh, practice this. And so, I mean, it was encouraging to him, but maybe not so encouraging for parents who, again, want to see their adult children in and out and employed in you know, a four or five year time frame. Um, but I, I can tell you that it, it doesn't happen that quickly. And uh, it takes a lot longer for, for them really to be ready to step out on their own. Um, and so transition is not so much about sprinting to the finish, finish line. Uh, and the wisest approach is to plan early, uh, think holistically. And, uh, you know, you, you got a lot of ideas here, and a lot of these ideas we try to put into practice, too, at CIP. Uh, we have a lot of different areas that we cover. Uh, so thinking holistically is really important. Uh, thinking in terms of broadening the community connections. Uh, exploring, I can't forget about this, I tell every parent, don't forget about uh, uh, exploring the government funding services like SSI, um, vocational rehabilitation, uh, food stamps, uh, re uh, subsidized housing. All these things are going to help students be more independent and feel a sense of independence on their own. And lastly, Remember to think positive and prepare not for a sprint, but for a marathon. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Well, I want to thank all.